Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Data Patents India Limited Q1 FY23 Earnings Conference Call, hosted by Go India Advisors. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Monali Jain from Go India Advisors. Thank you, and over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Faizan. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Data Patterns India Limited earnings call to discuss the Q1 FY23 results. We have on the call Mr. S. Rangarajan, Chairman and Managing Director, Ms. Rekha Murthy Rangarajan, Full Time Director, and Mr. Vankat Subramanian, Chief Financial Officer. We must remind you that the discussion on today's call may include certain forward looking statements and must be therefore viewed in conjunction with the risk that company faces. May I now request Mr. Rangarajan to take us through the company's business outlook and financial highlights, subsequent to which we will open the floor for Q&A. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Manali. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us today for our Q&A FY23 earnings conference call. I hope you would have seen the results presentation, which has been uploaded on the exchanges and on our website. While Venkat will take you through the results, I want to briefly touch upon the key highlights for this quarter. Despite Q1 being a seasonally weak quarter, we have delivered a strong revenue growth. Our revenues have almost doubled on a year-on-year -year basis, and our profitability has increased 1.4 times. When you look at the quarter one results closely, you will see that the gross margins have been maintained around 64 to 65%. There's a big bit of in EBITDA margins on account of seasonality of the business. Another key thing to notice is the development contracts and the production contracts have contributed equally to the revenue this quarter. This is an important highlight because development contracts provide a good visibility for our future revenues. Our order book position is strong and continues to grow. As on date, our order book stands at 664 crores. We are close to 340 crores of order where negotiations have been completed. Out of these, we also received a letter of intent for order worth 174 crores. Once the contract where negotiations are completed are converted to orders, our order book will cross at least 1,000 crores, which will be the highest in the history of data patterns. During Q1, we had an order inflow of 456 million rupees of production contracts. Some of the key contracts received were one, avionics contract for 183 million from HAL, avionics contract from DRDO for 104 million, a large order for electronic warfare from DRDO worth 18 million. The other category has been ATE and naval systems, where we have received orders worth 7 million and 10 million respectively. We are a long term debt free company and have utilized the proceeds from the IPO to pay off the debt and also expand our manufacturing facilities in Chennai. The new facilities required to handle full system contracts and also to augment the production and testing infrastructure to ease our operations. The system integration facility is already being used and the remaining portion will be completed in the next two to three months. Data patterns is now well recognized for its R&D, engineering, and execution capabilities. Every part that we manufacture is designed within our country, in, in, within our company, resulting in an integrated operation that maximizes value addition. We are focused on building complete systems, which immediately graduates us into an exclusive leave of companies who are not merely component manufacturers, but provide complete solutions. There are many macro factors supporting a strong growth output for us. We believe we are strategically positioned to benefit from this growth opportunity and are confident of delivering our shared guidance of 25 to 30% revenue growth in the FI23 and maintaining high gross margins. With this, I'll hand over uh, to Venkat for his comments. Venkat. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are happy to inform you that we have delivered a strong quarter. I would like to take you all through the financial performance of the company for the quarter in one by. Our revenues in Q1 almost doubled year-on-year, 
to 68 crore of its development contract contributed to 45 percentage and production contributed to 46 percentage of the revenue. Gross margin for the quarter maintained at 65 percentage sequentially, and EBITDA margins at 31 percentage in Q1. Our interest expenses are minimal at 2 crore, having fully paid our debts. Pad during the quarter stood at 14 crore at a growth of 34, 38 percentage year on year, and EPS at 2, 2 rupees 70 paise. We have spent around 45 crore till now for the new facility, and the cash in the books as of end of quarter one stands at 116 crore. Overall, this quarter's performance is strong. Generating record revenues in Q1, Q4 still a significant quarter, but we can see seasonality coming down gradually. With this, we will open the floor for the question and answer session. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 at this time. The first question is from the line of Nitin Arora from Access Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. Thank you for taking my question. Sir, uh, first question is on the order inflow, which you have received uh, post uh, 30th June, uh, because uh, it looks like you have won 211 crore worth more order. Uh, can you help us understand uh, where these orders have come from? Uh, number one, and also where you're writing in your presentation that you are in a negotiation stage with uh, of 300 crore worth order more. Uh, it will be helpful if you can help us understand where these, what are the programs where these orders are coming from. Okay, um, see this, um, there are two large orders which uh, we have finalized being the L1. Uh, India for the first time is uh, developing a space surveillance radar. This is for uh, Deep space surveillance for our defense departments, and for the first time, DRDO has contracted this as a complete radar uh, to be developed, not just the electronic piece parts. It's normally do, and they do the integration. It is an integration radar. So uh, we uh, were fortunate that we had lowest quote in both the contracts. So one contract uh, was signed on Monday, which is about 189 crores. The other contract is going to get signed where negotiations are completed. Is about 170 crores. It is what I we mentioned that we pay and not our crores. We have completed negotiations awaiting order. We will give yellow eye for this. The order is expected this week or next week. So there are two large orders on a complete radar. The important thing on this radar the orders is that this is only a, um, a scaled on prototype of the actual radar, which has to go to deep space surveillance. Uh, the final radar values is expected to be 2,000 crores each. So this is a start. Once we build the system, hopefully we will do the large systems as required by Indian Defence. So it's a very important milestone for us to get both the radar and the entire system, including building, construction, everything we will be doing ourselves. So this is a very, very important milestone for us, uh, these two radars. And this is part of the 16 not cross, which we told you already received on us. Uh, that is 400 not we already had on hand by end of June. Uh, we, we do the first quarter, we released some 40 odd crores, which I explained on the start of the presentation today. And then we received this 180 or 90 crore orders. There's a few other orders we received. We need to cross the smaller orders from various organizations we received. Next to receive is this 174 crores, which is going to be another radar on the lower frequency band, which again is going to be very, very large, uh, maybe, maybe 20 times or more size of this contract once the radar comes. The other things which are expecting contracts are uh, from uh, for the avionics, um, the negotiations completed for the LCA mark on it in the cockpit display. The negotiations completed on Saturday, which was 70 of course, so we expect the contract to happen in the next coming weeks. Similarly, we have uh, inquiries from, uh, for, uh, for mission systems for LCA. Again, we developed this long back. We're replacing imported systems there. So those orders are also expected to be 60 crores. 
we have also finalized uh, your L1 a negotiation completely for a autonomous uh, weapon autoloader for an autonomous uh, uh, battle tank and also the other car is expected in the year course so all in all similarly bromos uh, type of system uh, negotiation will be completed so order is expected in 60 crores so this is all together makes us this thousand crores which uh, i talked about in the earlier call it's very helpful sir just i have uh, you know uh, just to elaborate a little bit and i'm sorry i'm dwelling on the order wise uh, the state surveillance order both one which you have received and one which you are in negotiation this is for the army or this is for the uh, with segment uh, uh, or the uh, the low frequency radar as well okay one is with complete negotiations Mm-hmm. Uh, we were L1 and negotiation completed about a couple of months back. The order is mm-hmm. expected any time now. Mm-hmm. Uh, point two is uh, this is not army or navy. This is being uh, done by the RDO as a development contract. Okay. With uh, with another foreign partner as a consultant. But the radars we realize in India, full design being done by us. So we will do the full design of the radar uh, and co-design with the RDO. And post this development is done. I don't know. MOV will probably place the order for a larger radar, or how will it go? We don't know. But here, the one difference is, unlike most radar contracts where parts are ordered and integration is done by them, here we are doing the full radar, including integration. So that is the highlight of this, and this is going to be a very large radar going ahead. Got it. Uh, this is uh, this is quite interesting, sir, because I think that was you were uh, telling everyone that the complete radar integration we will do one day. So I think that's what the order has come for. Yeah, Got it. but the only thing we've been doing it on our own for MOD yeah. tenders and ISRO tenders, where we yeah. are allowed to build full systems. For DRD, we are already doing all of the electronics, but the radar integration is never done by us. This uh, one opportunity which came. He said uh, this we need to do because this is our core competency. We have to build the system. Well, getting the future radar is going to be huge, huge, very really huge. Largest okay. radar will be probably done in India. So that is important to us. We're very, very happy that uh, we could back this contract, and uh, a lot of effort is to go in the next two years to make this uh, real. Getting it. And then just uh, lastly, before I come back in the queue, the avionics order of LCA MK1. uh you said there are two orders one is for avionics and one more order now if you can help us clarify because one order i remember for the newer mk1 they want to remove uh they want to put the uh, electronic warfare system uh, from an indian entity or rather the domestic part and as well as the avionics and radar part now can you help us understand what is this 73 crore have come from which system for lca and the 60 crore one um uh, we are not talking ew or radar here these are all done by us way back in 2005 we designed the cockpit display for lca and what is flying in the lca is our systems and uh, based on that for the additional orders about uh, a few hundred pieces they have ordered now negotiation going on for many months it's got fine lines and chapter saturday so that we will deliver second is the mission computer which has been actually imported all along to replace that we delivered some two systems uh, to our hardware boards last year to ada and to chain so the orders we received now and some more inquiries have come on single tender for that as a fire and not pieces some of the discrete crores order uh, we should get so these are all single tender orders because based on earlier design products which we are getting for this program coming back to the first part of the question of ew or rwr Uh, we have delivered uh, our RWR to the RDO. <laughs> now that is fitted in the LCA, and it is uh, flight testing is happening on that. So we will be so once it's successful, the expectation is that it will be fitted into the LCA Lockwood A and other fighter platforms. Uh, we are also expecting contracts on the Super Hornet and other variants, so that this can do. Also in LCA Lockwood A, we have done a, a smaller version for Lockwood A to do conflict inside the space available there. And also we expect contract, but these are all. Uh, not uh, actually this is the future order is expected but the basic version which we delivered is already flying in lca and flight testing is happening so both based on success of the test we expect on additional orders to happen but that is not part of our projections today because uh, we have not projected that as part of the 1000 crore is not part of it as far as the radar is concerned we are presently not in that area we are expecting we want to get into this but at the present moment we are not uh, contributing the radar which you talking 
Okay, because sir, there were news in media that uh, the new LC MK1, uh, LC MK1, uh, there might be an Uttam radar which they might go ahead with, which generally I think extra microwave waves. Uh, any comment on that, or uh, we just got confused in that? That is also an testing. That is okay. what India wants to. Do. Okay. So an testing. Yes. Uh, got it. Got it, sir. I'll come back in the queue for more questions. Thank you very much for answering. Thank you. Reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1. The next question is from the line of Sandeep Pulsian from GM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Uh, so my first question is regarding the margins. Uh, I think you had guided for the 65 to 70% gross margins. Uh, that the company should clock going forward and one should not uh, look at last year margins as a barometer. Uh, uh, and also you made a comment in previous calls that uh, uh, that you would, this uh, high margins in certain contracts will give you the way uh, to bid for uh, new co new contracts, large value contracts at some aggressive prices. Uh, so how should we look at uh, the gross margin profile going forward? Uh, do you think on a blended basis, uh, we will still be in that 65 to 70% gross margin range? Or with this uh, large value integration orders, uh, this uh, gross margin range would come down a notch uh, lower. If you could give some more color on that. Uh, as we said last year, uh, last fall, uh, I think this year, what our projections will be we aimed at a 60% gross margin. Uh, this year, at the enhanced uh, sales, what has been guided to be We continue to do that. Um, uh, I've not commented on next year yet, and check in the orders uh, which is coming now. Um, some of them are executable this year, but last part of the contracts we're talking this uh, 300, 400 crores, uh, will get our 600, 500 crores will get executed next year. So that is the timeline for the contracts. So this will not affect this year's performance in terms of gross margin uh, for the time being. To answer the other question on system integration contracts, yes, what happens is while we retain our uh, in the electronic design which we do equipment design we do retain uh, you know a healthy gross margin about 60 percent gross margin normally we keep is because a lot of design effort goes and ip goes into this what happens in the integrated big systems when you buy generators when you make buildings and you put structures obviously we can't add 60 percent to that and expect to be l1 that's not going to be practical so we need to look at the program point of view and take call uh, not necessarily only a gross line, that is competitive to numbers. But going ahead, what happens? Let's take these two contracts and we scale this to 20 times. A radar, this is only a scaled on radar. The next radar is only 15 to 20 times bigger, each radar. So if you do that, mm -hmm. then what really scales is the electronics. And then the building and all other things is separate construction really happens to it. So on that level, we have protected our systems and uh, so that you know, tomorrow when scale happens, we have reasonable margins. Obviously, with size of business, margins may be different. But what we are more looking at is revenue growth and bottom line growth. Not particular margin on each vendor, each part is not a particular margin necessary on equipment which you do because a lot of IP goes into the development. Are we competitive in an international scale with what we're quoting is what we're seeing? Because we reinvest on the development and continue to build the product as a product over the next seven to ten years time. So we need the margins to drive the business. But on system integration contracts like this, obviously we have to be competitive. But what I can say is, as the revenue grows, our bottom line also will grow. We are not taking revenue at the at the cost of the bottom line. So, so that is uh, fairly understood. What I was uh, trying to understand is uh, these two orders which you have received. Uh, broadly, what would be the electronics portion, uh, or this is uh, primarily electronics, and on the bought out, typically what are the margins? Are they uh, low single digits? Are they in early double digits? If you could just give us some sense, uh, that could help us assess the uh, gross margins for uh, these orders. Not when they scale up, but in the current give an estimate for next year, not contract wise, because these are sensitive information. And we don't want this distributed. How I quote for which contracts to the competitors? I hope you understand. Understood. No, no, no worries. Understood on that front. Uh, second uh, question was uh, on the ratio that you typically share uh, on the single vendor contracts uh, versus the competitively one contracts. Uh, so for this year, how do you see that ratio? Typically, the 60 to 70 percent of our contracts were one on single vendor basis. If you could give some more color on FY23 order inflows, how that would look? 
uh, and second part to that is also on the exports piece uh, we have been reading in news a lot of uh, 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 these uh, you know lca and uh, brahmos and other systems will be exported uh, so what is the order pipeline on the export front uh, those are the two final questions Okay. See, uh, most of the contracts we get are single vendor, which is what is predictable business for us, and that is what we plan for future. What order we are getting? So our pipeline, what we project, and the business plan we make internally is all based on largely single vendor contracts, because we when you go for a competitive bid, we do not know whether we, it's a zero one situation, so we don't really predict on that. But good thing is today we also have won you know competitive bids and that is a type of bids that we won by us in a few case situations which is good so that is also adding to our overall thing because of the large contract we have got our uh, single vendor contracts we are talking about 50 to 60 percent will be single vendor contracts and the rest is competitive bid but on the projections for this year in terms of for our course and course I said for FY 22-23 order intake or January to if I verify 23 and I had made some projections last year, that does not include this 400 final course of competitive bids. So what really is going to happen is, I think we will exceed our order intake uh, projections given last, last call or uh, last year. So that's what's happening. But to answer the questions, is about 55 to 60 percent or 50 to 60 percent in the contracts. And exports, I think we should do about 10 percent exports this year. And uh, we are discussion with uh, started this more this year. We got an order for about the half a half a million pounds order last month. We are expecting more contracts to happen. Some more countries are coming to us in terms of development requirements. So hopefully with time it will grow. But today it's about ten percent of our revenue. Okay. Thank you. And just as far as export on Brahmos and things like that, we've already finalized a contract with them. The order is expected about six crores which is to be coming. I'm giving you a wholesome numbers, not exact numbers, but uh, this is for the the system which we have designed, but the most will stay starting back in 2002. So the orders keeps coming. There are more requirements from Naval Base of India that also is coming. But it is not an export for us. We deliver, we deliver yeah. to Brahmos only. Brahmos in turn will uh, you know, deliver it as a full system, uh, export it as a full system. For us it is only a domestic sale. And uh, LCA, I, know, uh, I don't think there's any export order. Okay. And just if you don't mind, uh, could you disclose these two large orders which you won under competition? Uh, who were the other uh, bidders and uh, what could have been the price differential between L1, yourself, and the others? If you could give some color. Mm -hmm. I don't know. First is I don't have full data. I know the competitors, but I don't have full data what is the L2 price because they didn't disclose the price. While our price is disclosed to competitors, because they had to negotiate with us, they did not disclose. So I have a guesstimate, but not uh, the exact number. Is that relevant here? If you, you can always, I can talk to you one-on-one and give you that data. All right. All right, sir. Thank you so much for taking the question. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Maybe I can take Sanjeev Tesh and also tell you, the major competitors are LNT, Astra, Bharat Electronics, Tata. These are the kind of companies who quote it there. Thank you. Participants, to ask a question, you may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Akshay Kothari from Envision Capital. Please go ahead. So congratulations on a very good order book. Uh, so I wanted to understand uh, on the 211 crores order inflow which we have received post 30th June, uh, would the orders be mostly on the development side? Uh, no, whatever we see on um, first quarter, this radar is a development contract. But that is after first quarter only received. First quarter received is about 45 odd crores. Mostly uh, as a repeat production order. Production contract. These are not uh, development contracts. The bigger orders we received now are all development contracts, but whatever we have already received are not development contracts. This is already done and earlier delivered, which is a repeat contract for us. I'm talking about the post post first quarter, uh, 30th June. So that would yeah. be mostly post on the first development. quarter. Um, the two two three large contracts are production uh, development contracts. Which is the two radars, which are talk space surveillance, and one for 
uh, the uh, tank automatic uh, automatic loader for the tank we were developing contracts but uh, other than that uh, for the avionics and for dromos etc whatever you got for communications and all that these are all production contracts which was already we delivered this earlier so it's a production or repeat order for us okay okay and so on the developmental order side uh i am uh, assuming that our order execution cycle and working capital cycle uh, both are little bit different because thing is in development we we have facilities like stage financing and we also avail some non fund facilities so even if our order execution cycle must uh, may look little bit elongated our working capital cycle is not that elongated am i right in that assumption yeah, yeah. all the dozen contracts some i think most of 30% advance and there's also a stage payment on for delivery is also there again again banker and so mostly again non fund we are getting money in this and both these orders are giving what we are delivery cycle ready months for the month delivery so next year it has to be delivered on the production contract so called they are also given advance uh, these are bear due and bromos contracts and even hr contracts uh, those are repeat contract we are getting some advance there also so those are non fund also there so uh, cash flow is not a problem we get uh, we get advance and we can deliver part delivery and uh, during part delivery we get a payment for the delivered parts so there is a stage by delivery and a stage by collection so it's not a problem to work the contract whatever contract is it till now there are not an issue on these things okay so the guidance which we gave of maintaining 280 to 300 days of working capital remains intact right okay here what's happening is it may be we are trying to do the debtor cycles are coming down But what is happening is our uh, component stock material inventory is going up. This is mostly because we are taking some proactive steps to see that though the contract is the long term, we are ordering material ahead of time. If there is a problem with uh, electronic components, some of the components suddenly we find that the scheduled delivery gets extended, and that gets extended on the month of delivery or the week of delivery, which puts us a lot of considerable risk on producing and delivering when all the other material is available. So we are now taking more important things that we need to deliver. So we are started stocking materials. So our inventory, our inventory is holding is going up. But on the whole, the return debtors are coming down. So this is because of the business cycle today, COVID, post-COVID issues on electronic components. But uh, the intent is to see that cash flows are there and uh, okay, our cycles are brought down. Yeah. Okay. Okay. uh and so on the revenue guidance or uh, the 25 30% revenue guidance uh as per my calculations uh, would be would this guidance be more on a conservative side yeah we like to keep it conservative deliver and then see what happens because some uh, is up happen something doesn't happen then we get shift to next year you, uh, sir there was an audio loss from your line i would request you to please repeat the last line Okay. See, uh, we'd like to retain the guidance the way it is, uh, but conservative maybe, but we retain it at the present moment because uh, these are project deliverables. There is a development contract, some development delays may be there, or inspection delays may be there. Some component doesn't come, so we want to come, you know, ensure that you know whatever guidance we give, we exceed on the guidance. So that is why we maintain the guidance as it is. Okay. And in the investor presentation, the orders are all deliverable only after 18 to 24 months. So that way. It is, uh, and then this year it is going to be almost same, twenty five thirty percent as it was transferred. Going forward, we may revise the uh, uh, guidance in case uh, we think it appropriate. Okay. okay. And so on the uh, in in the investor presentation, you have mentioned that three hundred crores of uh, further orders are expected in FY twenty three in the thirty eight June uh, investor presentation. So post that we have received two one one crores. So We would be expecting another hundred crores that way. No, we should expect another. See, I told you, you know, these kind of tender bids, we don't really are not considered for the projection earlier day. So these have come now. So I think we will exceed guidance on the order intake for a certain entity will go up. Yeah, it will go up by further three hundred crore is what uh, we have made it in the presentation. Okay, got that. That's very good and. Uh, my last question would be on the innovation so you did mention about radar so uh, what would uh, what i would like to know is uh, on the newer product side uh, basically on the innovation part 
uh, which are the new products which are in the pipeline and uh, where are we planning to go with that uh, if you could give a sense of that we are trying to do a whole range in radars on airborne radars uh, we started design of an airborne radar we already delivered one to the rdo which is quite tested in dornier but the dornier upgrade program to maybe of course that is happening so towards that uh, you know we already started development of an airborne radar which uh, which is not a good likelihood of the commons in india <coughs> so then we are also doing some work on the radios we have delivered the first few pieces for fighter aircraft software defense radio to the rdo where they are putting the reforms and then it's expected to be flight tested in hca for the start and also other platforms are going ahead this is uniquely different because we are now importing from the file and uh, where we meet all the specifications in terms of hardware we also have local encryption internet encryption to be added that also is made provision here meets and exceeds all the specifications we already qualified the system for flight rate of use <coughs> so based on the flight test done by drdo and acceptance it can also go to Uh, other platforms a variant of that also we received an order for a ground application uh, on vehicle mounted applications <coughs> that we received the order about a month back we could execute it in the next 3 to 4 months time so things variants of that we are trying to build we are also doing a variant of that for radio relay for a surveillance um a uv application i have been saying that you know we have not only look at mod but we also have to do in india has to be self reliant and build more in india we need to build indian ecosystem towards that the first part we talk to a platform vendor and we're doing parts of the equipment all the aircraft equipment in india we are planning to do far more aggressively those kind of equipment build so which goes into their platform and they, if they sell that platform we in sell start getting additional numbers they already started doing that uh, this is second area the third area is also we working a lot of ew Uh, we delivered last one year. We delivered a number of new generation EW products, both from HF up to 40 gigahertz. Um, an enormous range of products, all are in very small footprint form factor, which can get as a building block. Which can go to air, water, underwater, uh, you know, ground. All of them can go to all platforms. We expect that variants of that can get used in various applications, including emory tenders. Um, we are also looking at. Actively developing additional uh, capabilities uh, to uh, for micro and mini satellites, small satellite, including payload. That is another work we are doing. Where the entire system can get done. We are also working on some data link and waveforms for data link for uh, line of sight applications. So we do a host of stuff on uh, product development uh, from an Indian context, but it will be all positioned as an international product. You see, the equipment are designed in India. Uh, then import technology and build manufacturing equipment here. The idea is to differentiate ourselves and be the equipment vendor. This is why we have 480 engineers working with us. We are scaling the engineering capability. We are recruiting more people, and uh, we have now really nearly 900 people. I think the next few months will cross 1,000. Uh, we are doing a lot of people. Second, we also created infrastructure. We are creating additional test infrastructure, equipment test infrastructure, and all of that. We are all keeping in line with what we have as a future vision to build state-of-the-art, internationally uh, qualified kind of systems uh, from India, which can which are export capable. So we do a host of stuff uh, on that topic. Okay. Yeah, that's it from my side, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Ajay. Thank you. Participants to ask a question, you may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Renu Bait from IFL Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi sir. Good evening. Um, I just have one or two questions, largely on the order inflow side. Uh, while you did mention of uh, this new 200 crores of orders that have gotten to queue, uh, can you share some update on the large program for which you were expecting um, both Him Shakti as well as uh, uh, the um, other project, Arudra? Yeah. See, what has happened is when we last year when we were on the call, I said this year order intake will be these kind of orders, you know, Him Shakti, Arudha, etc. But okay. there has been some delays. We thought the order would be signed last year by Bharat Electronics, and back to back we should get some contracts. But that was postponed. But what I hear from market 
is that that is any time about to be signed. We don't know what the any time is. It is yeah, this is as good as mine. But what we hear is it is going to get done. So back to back, I think you are on a call with BEL. They should give you more clear uh, indications of when it's going to get signed. Hopefully after they sign, we should start talking to them on the subsistence for Inshakti. But I expect this to happen this calendar year. Uh, second is uh, on the uh, on the uh, Arudra game. Again, I think they are in discussion or negotiation. The tender is already submitted many months back. So again, Bell is in in in, in, in negotiations. Again, what we hear is that they are this that should get finalized and back to back orders should also flow this year. These two orders. The third one is the LLTR, which is the Ashwini. I think uh, uh, Air Force is trying to move the paper for AOM and that. So there is a lot of correspondence activity happening. So, but so this also should happen this year at least take off this year. Maybe contract happening next year. Uh, these are all in the cards. Um, there are other programs on which we did not talk about. There is the uh, Netra 2, which is a contract which has come for early warning data. Mm -hmm. Take offs are going to get uh, already bought by uh, DRDO, uh, Airbus A321 and they are upgrading the aircrafts to radars and electronic warfare and other things. So we also should be playing a role in that. The size of the role is, as of now, not uh, clear, but we will play a role. So those are contracts which will happen. Development, start development contracts should happen this year. There is again uh, another program for Dornier <coughs> uh, upgrade. Again, some contracts may come to that uh, in that order also. Again, size of contract, this is not a time to talk about it. As and when it happens, uh, we will update you on the kind of contract. But we are working towards all of them. And uh, it seems that you know there are quite a lot of activity happening. There are new radars which are being planned, uh, some activities happening. You already quoted and become L1 in one, uh, one Air Force program upgrade, which is Aerostat, EWF Aerostat. Uh, that, again, we expect a contract any time now. And that's an exciting contract because it has common to an end, not of them, and a full system upgrading it with their version capability, all of them will do. That gives a lot of confidence that what is originally imported is now completely being designed in an Indian company. That gives a lot of confidence mm -hmm. yes, to the services. We expect that these kind of contracts will be the starting to, uh, you know, let India bloom as an equivalent supplier to world class. So we are very really focused on such contracts which will help us scale. Uh, not just the business, but on a competency model, which is then, it is worldwide, uh, you know, you can go and sell. We, will, we can use India as a platform to validate, give an interest quality product here, and take it global. This is our interest. And these are all small orders, which is, I think, building block to see how we can be successful in the future. Yeah. This aerospace order, which you mentioned, where we were L1, what would be the value or size of this project? Hmm. It's about 18 crores. Okay. And um, just to uh, round up, um, the 300 crores order which you mentioned should come in the subsequent next 3-6 uh, months, essentially would include Himshakti and Arudra, these two projects together. No, 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 we will not include Himshakti in that. The 300 crores, achha, what after this, okay, next, next, yeah. Uh, no, even there, Himshakti, I have not, not added Himshakti in that. There is, um, there are, some, I, I don't want to say which contract because it's a bit premature, but I'm giving guidance to the crores. Uh, we can exceed that. If Himshakti kind of thing happens, this can get exceeded. But I've not planned Himshakti in the three of course. Okay. No, no, I'm just trying to clarify. So in Tokyo, we've already received 211 crores worth of orders, which were over and above what we were um, indicating earlier. Uh, in addition, we have guided for another 300 crores worth of new orders in the next six, nine months. Uh, which you are saying may may not, as in if, if him Shakti comes, there could be positive upsides to the 300 crores of incremental orders in the second half of the current system. Correct. Okay. Uh, so, which is uh, interesting. And uh, largely, uh, lastly, if you look at the broad uh, issues of supply chain, semiconductors, how is the situation now versus last quarter? Have we seen material improvement? Um, are we acceleration project execution, including projects which were delayed, or you think uh, some of these problems may continue to persist for some time? 
So any comments on this? Yeah, see, it's uh, there is a general improvement, but uh, certain types of popcorn from some manufacturers are still slated 52 weeks and 60 weeks. Uh, what we are doing is placing orders and expecting uh, uh, improvement in the delivery schedules. But while placing orders, they are not willing to commit any uh, earlier time frame. There are a few companies who are doing this. So we are looking at alternates to, in case it doesn't come, can we do a redesign of those parts, use some other parts. So those kind of uh, mitigation practices are following. But we don't want to do that all the time, so we're placing orders ahead, hoping that the government will come. But yes, generally the situation will improve, but still there are specifics and issues. And every single component is a problem. One component doesn't come, we can't deliver the problem. So from that perspective, we are very cautious and probably taking additional decisions to stock inventory. Right. And lastly, any developments to share on the space side? Uh, or you think it's still a little too early and we may have something a little later during the year rather than now? Yeah. Uh, we're working on some, uh, but uh, it's not come to any situation where we can announce anything. Got it. Uh, no problem, sir. Good performance. Um, thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, to ask a question, you may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Gagan Tareja from ASK Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Yeah, am I audible? Sir, you are not audible. Please increase the volume of your device. Yeah. Am I audible now? Yes. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, sir, uh, first question is around the order book. I, I am slightly confused. Uh, orders on hand is 663 crores, and negotiated uh, uh, orders with LOI received is 174. Negotiated and yet to receive LOI is 168. So that is uh, theoretically another you know, what, 330, 340 crores possible. Are you saying there's another 300 crores over and above that, or are you saying this is a 300 crores additionally over 663 crores, plus whatever you could get from him, Shakti, Arudra, and uh, Ashwini? Yeah, <clears throat> this is what Renu asked. What I'm saying is it's already negotiated contracts. The contracts are expected probably this one next one. Uh, maybe if this month we should get all the contact with us. Only declared only one and negotiation is completed. <laughs> so with these contacts happening, I, I was saying that we will cross a thousand crore order book, which is what has been uh, given in the rest release. Okay. But earlier, we had given guidance last year that uh, we will do some 400 to 500 crores of order intake uh, during the course of uh, FI23. So in that, we are not catered for tender, tender orders. What we did then give a, a, a guidance was based on some of the large orders which has come are coming based on single vendor contracts. So there's a predictability. Only the timelines can get shifted. That's what we gave. But these are tender orders we got, which is a good thing. So I retain that. We still maintain that some of the new things will happen in the last few months where we believe the contracts will happen. So I put additional Another three, of course, is possible during the course of effect uh, is what uh, we're seeing now. And if Pink Shakti and some large quarters happen, that will be a bonus. Right. And, and uh, also, uh, the 173 and 168 crore orders, uh, is this the, the surveillance radar order and the uh, low frequency bandwidth order? Is, uh, if I got it correctly, or, or am I mistaken? Yeah, these are two two particular radars. Yeah. One is an S-band, the other one is UHF. Okay. You know, what I call low frequency is ultra high frequency. But uh, that is how it is because we are doing 10 years and we are now. So, there are two separate orders. These are scaled down radars, you know, probably 15 times, 20 times scaled down. To validate the radar performance, everything else as a building block design is common. So I'll scale the radar, increase the number of building blocks, and you'll be the, so let's say one two-story building I do, it can be a 20-story building tomorrow, where the radar get housed on the side wall. So the size of order is very large. This is going to deep space and tracking deep space requirements. Because I can't talk about specific applications. I'm not even authorized to understand this. It's working with the idea on this. But the very fact that we're building different radar for them in the next 18, 20 months is what we're supposed to deliver. 
So those are things that are, which is very exciting for us because these are future technology and the size of business is getting very large tomorrow once we deliver the products. And this is an integrated radar, so the repeat requirements will, uh, we, we believe hopefully will come to us. So the scaled down versions will be tested and validated and then the final uh, full scale radars will be uh, ordered. Yes. If you could give us the time. There is one or many. India is a large country, we have a large space to manage our space assets. So we don't have an exact plan how many will happen, but it will be decisive. Right. So uh, what will be the timeline for testing and validating the scaled down versions? Our delivery is about 18 to 20 months, okay. and uh, you know after that they are tested. But uh, once the basic systems are functioning, they are saying that we will go ahead and start planning for the big data because delivering the big data also will take time because it's a very large, very 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 large system. It's probably the largest radar India will design. Both the radars, the individual largest radar, so it's talking thousands of kilometers to be tracked and surveyed. It's a large radar, so. They may take, once the base systems are coming into picture, it depends on what government does and the remote is thinking. They see something happening, maybe they will initiate early. Or subsequent wait or do. I am not really at liberty to say because I have no complete data on this. But it will happen. We have delivery is scheduled for uh, 18 months to 24 months. Okay. And the design of these radars is, D is DRDO or is it is it your own design? The architecture design is DRDO. Okay. We do all the subsystem design, electronic piece for PCB, all of them we design. Of course, anything you design will be supervised and managed by DRDO. We will be joint developer. But the final, the final, see, they may be the final design authority, but we are doing all the part design, like we have been doing all along. We design all the channels, say the, the antennas, the signal processor, all the radars, everything, you know, the mechanical structures, the movement mechanisms. Everything will be designed, and of course, validated by the article. Right, and uh, you indicated execution is 18 to 20 months for these orders, and what would be the execution period for the 663 crores orders on hand? All are in the next two years, excepting one order which can go to the third year, which is the copy display, which is a three year order, but we have an option to do early delivery also. So we need to decide what we want to do, whether it's keep it third year or we can do it in the second year. So the entire potential 1,000 crore order book has an execution time frame of 20 to 24 months? Yes. Right. Okay. And uh, when you when you say, you know, you, you are moving into uh, system integration uh, orders, uh, is it first of all possible to understand of this 1,000 crores how much, I mean, ballpark, what proportion is system integration and what is, you know, simply pure product, subsystems, and so on? See, largely, except for these two radars, mm -hmm. which is uh, as building, construction, all of those things, and power systems, as an integrated radar system. The rest of all are our systems. Of course, we have some 100 core course of the uh, position of those radar will deliver this year and next year. A lot of mechanical stuff and all that in that, but the design is fully ours in all of them. So we call it a system, our own system. But here there are bottles uh, in those things. It's not there in whatever we are doing. Mm -hmm. So largely, except for three hundred four hundred crores, six hundred crores will be our own systems. Right. In the existing power crores. And I mean, uh, since BEL is is you know a large integrator uh, uh, of of electronic systems for. For DRDO and uh, MOD and so on, are there uh, margins, gross margins, representative of what the system integration margins can look like? See, these are two flavors. You know, Bharat Electronic gets most of the contracts on nomination basis. Okay. So I really cannot say how they are pricing the product because it is between government and departments. Orders are done. Whereas when we go out, it is on a competitive basis. So we need to look at that and price it accordingly. So I won't be able to directly say that bottom line goal is still integrated, the bottom line is 20%. Will I do 20% or lower than that or higher than that? That's not a statement I can make because I do not know how they make that margins, really. And what contracts, what is being done. We are going to look at product specific, program specific requirements, take our call on what is competitive. 
and God is accepting the prayers and make an offer. So it's very difficult. And second is, uh, without competition you do, things may be very different. Right? Mm. So we, we can't really compare like that. Right. And on, on developmental uh, contracts, you get 30% advances if I got it correctly. On on production contracts, what, what is the advances? Uh, and on integration uh, orders, what's the advances like? We don't develop and we can't say all are getting 30%. Because an open tender comes, they say no advance, only for, you know, for a guaranteed paper you give a 3%, and after delivery only we get money. That also is there. But in these contracts which we have, we have a 30% advance. And for some, on the production of repeat contracts in HL, we have 15 or 20% advance. In only tenders, as for DAP 2020, uh, they are allowed to give 15% advance. 20% advance on the contract value. Mm -hmm. And stage payment happens on part deliverables. If one year or every three months you deliver something, on that there's a percentage paid. Either the value of the con uh, unit is paid, less advance, or they have a, a, a defined stage payment for delivery. So both are possible. This is MOD tenders. So some contracts also come with their advance. But largely here, now we've got contracts in advance. Right. So finally, networking capital uh, on integrated, uh, you know, system contracts, would it be similar to what you have so far had on, on, you know, your product and uh, product contracts, or, or is it going to be uh, a little different or very different from that? Very, very interesting question. We're going to do the system now. We will try to the sub vendors to do back to back, which they may not agree. Okay, so we need to negotiate better terms for us. Otherwise, you know what happens is talking to us a bit more. But what has happened is, DRD also understands the large order, and they give it a stage payment against bank guarantee. So again, one point limit, other than the advance, you also have another stage payment where we can show procurement happening, and then get some money, so your cash flows are slightly eased out. So that is possible, but uh, from Networking capital days, what we say, there may be a bump because of last contract, something will happen. But what we will do in this situation is, try to get the bottle out at the final stage, not during development stage the first one year. Get them uh, right in time, yes in time, accept it, take it directly to field. We will not try to bring it to a factory and keep it here. Unlike raw materials which we keep here and manufacture and test and validate, those things will be done at subcontractor place or vendor's place. The customer go and validate it, they'll ship directly to the site. So that is how we want to plan our uh, working capital. Hopefully we'll plan it well, see that we don't have issues. Right, right. Uh, sir, if I'm allowed just one more, or if if, if not, I'll, I'll get back in the queue. If you're okay, I'll ask one more question. I have no problem, but if the organizer has to decide. I have no idea who's waiting. Okay. Uh, so you you uh, you know you make seekers for Brahmos, uh, uh, missile seekers. Uh, you know simply because our missile programs are now fairly comprehensive, QRSAM, you know MRSAM, and uh, very short range air defense systems and man portable ATGMs and so on and so forth. Do you have uh, any plan to expand your uh, your footprint on the seeker side? See, uh, to be honest, we have all the comp competency to build whatever you're saying. But presently, these are all uh, transfer technology imported coming into the country. If we get an opportunity to quote against such requirements, 100% we will do it. Uh, in, in small weapons to larger uh, seekers, weapons, we have a competency model which can build it. But what happens is that it comes as a weapon in the uh, MR SAM and all that we're talking about, you are saying. So you buy a weapon, you buy parts of it, transfer technology comes to manufacturing here, it goes to PSUs. That is what is happening. So when uh, this uh, facility happens when you can design products here, then uh, definitely we will be standing in line or in the front of the line to see the real the opportunity. But it's, so it's not just a competency, it's a question of uh, uh, getting the right opportunity to build it. It's not that you know we'd like to expand capability to build it, we have the capability. But we need a contract to build because we we can't build general specifications for an APGM or anything for that matter. How will I put it part of the weapon? That is that is a tricky part. And unless you're allowed to put the weapon and do testing, 
and you can't do this. So there is no point in designing things uh, in these kind of situations without the weapon manufacturer or the buyer right. participating in that program, giving a specification, and then build and validate. So that's the only way we can do it. That is why I'm saying all along we need an Indian ecosystem to say we develop here. One thing government is doing is saying 50% Indian content in every contract is a start. So they make one which they're saying is a second start, which this we can do. And then uh, the technology will become some IDEX, but IDEX are all the small parts, small business systems, not for these kind of complex systems where the weapon has to also get developed. So as and when the ecosystem grows, I think people like us will play a very large role in uh, building the competencies and the products so that it can be truly made in India kind of system. And, and this is the work that you've done, you know, for for uh, developmental work for uh, relate uh, for for DRDO, uh, you know, which is now sort of coming to fruition and and will scale up. What sort of you know uh, potential pipeline uh, in radars and electronic warfare systems and avionic display systems and so on do you foresee in the next two three years? While you give a figure in your presentation. Uh, 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 you know, uh, you've already received a sizable uh, part of, of that figure right away in this, this year itself. So therefore, I'm simply trying to understand, you know, uh, what's the potential pipeline? What are the areas, uh, you know, which will be critical? Uh, and and how, how large could the opportunity be over the next three, four years? Yeah, we saw two to three billion rupees they said to the force plus that remains as a pipeline because uh, no part of the pipeline has been realized as of now. These are all different contracts. Okay. Uh, uh, nothing to do with the pipeline projected. And the pipeline will go up because we're developing more products now. And uh, if this is qualified and it comes to other ECA programs, that also can get the headache. So the pipeline remains intact. Uh, we thought some of them will start this year. But we have two to three years only. Earlier also we said two to three years because the decision making time is uh, going to be um, uh, long term. Though there have been, you know, we have qualified the systems, you know, tendering will for the repeat requirement has to happen, funding has to happen, and then after that back to back contracts has to happen. So that is why we said. And some of the programs like RWR, Legend, and Airball systems takes time because once flight testing happens, funding has to happen the upgrades. And then only this will happen. But there's enormous potential because there are too many aircrafts, too many types of aircrafts, and all of them, the electronics is obsolete or going obsolete. So the airplane flies for 40 years. Electronics does not fly for so many years. So there's an urgent need to upgrade it, remains and then as combat worthy. So requirements are large. The question of how do we address the requirement, meet customer expectations, and uh, after that, they have to ensure that money and time frame for upgradation is done, and we are there at that time. So these are the factors. So that's why we didn't put a timeline for three, four years. This pipeline is there, and we still expect the pipeline to be there, and it should grow. Yeah. And, and finally, sir, from, from a manpower perspective, you know, since, since now these are all sort of sunrise sectors, and there's obviously high demand for, for experienced uh, and, and talented engineers in, in this in this area is it is it is relatively difficult for you to get uh, the, the requisite manpower with the requisite work experience or is it increasingly getting more difficult or you feel that you know that's not an issue at all we, we have to grade the manpower there is development manpower project management manpower uh, hr production and then uh, management, if you grade. In the general purpose area like management, uh, HR, you know, these are, we will get uh, lateral hires to do this and build up competency and uh, the top layers can get built, the top and middle ones can build. Similarly, project management can be lateral recruits and once one or two years of training with us with our way of working, they also fit in, which is what our experience has been uh, hitherto. So on the lower end, if you look at the development skills and things like that, production and development, what we are doing is to take fresh graduates and train them. We've been doing this for 15, 20 years now. Only the scale of people, number of people we're taking now is enhanced. We have in-house training, in-house, our own champions training, 
our own engineers training we have outside in, uh, people coming and training them so training is a fundamental part of our recruitment process matter of fact we even takes it 9 months ahead of uh, job take them as uh, training engineers on the when they are in fourth year and uh, see that we do the projects here we, we give them salaries and take them in so they continue to work as we go along we we found good success in that so on that area of technology which you're talking about uh, we don't normally hire laterals because like you said it's very difficult to get the kind of people who we want and we not hire from competition also we home grown uh, in house training is what we started to till day going ahead it may change but as of now this is the plan we're not really looking at lateral hires for those kind of positions but we confident we need to beef up our uh, hr process our training procedures recruitment yes we do have problems of hiring uh, there is a issue on that there is a demand there is a gap we are trying to address the gap as we go along and with scaling happening we are looking at uh, what is uh, what kind of uh, staff positions are getting open how do we plan for it it's an enormous work it's actually capacity building work uh, we are uh, we are uh, we are seized of that particular problem and uh, we are finding solutions to how to do this and how to multiply it how to reduce the the largeness of the work in the smaller pieces so youngsters can do so we have the work yeah we try to them. see that uh, they uh, come up and uh, do the technical uh, so we are addressing the problem in various levels um, but i think we will we will we will build the competency because have all all the 900 people we have been most of them 800 plus have been built uh, internally by us uh, they are all home grown home grown more of more and uh, our average age is 23 24 for all the 900 we see obviously we see the people but so we have a young crowd and willing to learn and there is a lot of ownership in our company all the two people are uh, shareholders and data partners so there is a lot of ownership right and we want to build a large organization together yeah and your thoughts on succession planning Yeah, uh, we already had, you know, recruited last uh, EGM, recruited Vijay, who is the CEO. He is about 20 years with Data Patterns. He is young. Uh, he is brought in as a director on the board. Similarly, looking at each part of uh, each role and how do we want to build the role, how do we build up. So this is one of the one of the agenda points the board has given us, and uh, we are working on how do we who 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 are the guys who will take our position, how do we scale. Uh, you are asking the right question because this is the discussion at the board meeting even yesterday. We have started actively. Uh, we have already identified a few uh, uh, positions, and we are then uh, going to take it forward. The other thing is, it's, uh, since homegrown business, uh, it's a very closely knit uh, organization. So the top management is all together, all decision making is together. There is no hierarchy in that sense. So every every uh, decision is shared and owned. and all 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 problems are uh, common and understood yeah. so we should be able to build this what i think thanks thanks and wish you all the best sir. thank you thank you thank you very much thank you the next question is from the line of mudit kabra from ilara capital please go ahead hi sir uh, congratulations on uh, great numbers uh my first question is like uh, with this uh, better margin of 31% in q1 what would be your outlook uh, for the whole year like for a better margin well, can you can you come back again your voice is a bit muffled uh, hello uh, is this better yeah yeah uh, sir considering 31% a better margin in q1 like what is your outlook for the whole year see we have told you uh, here we will Do 40 percent, a bit down. We will continue to keep that guidance because see what happens. Um, the the a bit down is a function of uh, revenue and gross margin and overall expenses. See our revenue is not evenly distributed all quarters, so the last quarter becomes a high revenue, but the overhead remains same in all quarters. So a bit down then quarter to quarter is low in the first three quarters. And the fourth quarter jumps up, and overall a bit the, uh, I think you know around 40 percent guidance again we do that. Matter of fact, what is interesting is uh, from year on year basis, first quarter 21, 22 to this quarter, our bit the has gone up. Yeah. Okay, uh, but though the overheads have gone up, uh, expenses have gone up, and even the gross margins have come down because of some few contracts, our bit the has actually gone up. 
So we will continue to keep the guidance of 40% every time. Okay. Um, and another question is uh, like, uh, uh, as we are filling more of our order book from uh, uh, radar contracts and recently uh, you've disclosed that uh, this LOI order is regarding uh, space surveillance radars, which is a big size. So can we expect um, higher gross margins, higher margins in the coming year when the, these uh, orders will be executed? Uh, like higher than 65, 60% what you've guided for? Say we are already a very high gross margin company. If we have to increase gross margin in large contracts, in competition with LNT, Tata, Bayi, and all that, we think it's feasible. Uh, I think our gross margin higher it comes from basically because we have done internal design and the IP is getting captured there. But if you do system integration, the IP is not there. And it's a competitive model across. So obviously, the gross margin there is going to be lower. Because when you buy and integrate, you cannot have that kind of margin. And what we do in design, since so design is done over many years, and this is all written off, you are seeing it today having a gas one higher. So obviously, it will not be like that. But what I would say is the revenue will go up, the bottom line also will go up on a year on year basis. That's all we're doing. And today, we have to scale to a large corporate. I need to build the end equipment. We can't be a part supplier and then expect to do you know, a few thousand crores of business year on year. If you want to do that, we need to build systems like this. So our aim is to grow. So what is to do, but then do in India. Keep the margin profile as, as intact as possible in a competitive scenario. By doing more in India, where others import and do, we try and do more in India. And that is where the grass market really comes up. But when that's not there, then we need to compete on, a, on the same kind of a, 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 a flow then obviously we have to simulate the gross margin. But then it's never the same because a whole lot of electronic systems get added because that's your core competency and that's the programs we are selling in. So there will be some difference where we have flexibility in terms of pricing. Got it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this was the last question. I would now like to hand the conference.